in the morning. This is a definite privilege for me to be able to be involved in this this morning, and it's a privilege for us as a church uh, to do uh, these baptismal services. Uh, it's a very important thing, uh, because it is part of what, uh, what Christ commanded and asked us to do in his great commission, even from the very beginning. And he, uh, when he first, uh, when he last left this earth, and the, one of the last things he said to his his disciples uh, was to go into all the world and to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to observe all that he's commanded. So he wants us to baptize um, our members and our um, uh, people at our church. And that's so important, too, because um, our faith is meant to be to live out in public. We don't do baptisms in front of an empty room or in front of a closed door here. We do this in front of our church family. Because he wants our faith to be lived out in public, right? He wants us to be uh, to be salt and light, and not put our light under a bushel, right? No, um, but to live out our faith and to be a light. And that's uh, that's what part of this is. That's why, uh, that's part of why we do this publicly. Um, and there's nothing special about this water. Um, this baptism does not do anything to add to our salvation. Uh, the Bible is very clear that we're saved by grace through faith. And each each of these students has placed their faith in Christ already at a previous time, and they'll share about that. But this morning, they want to come before you and to share that publicly and uh, to, uh, to tell you uh, that they have placed their faith in him. I want to live for him. So I want to first invite Sierra Shippey down. Um, Sierra is a freshman in high school. She's the, she's the daughter of Mark and Bev Shippey. And she is going to come back. So Sierra, share with us uh, about your faith in Christ. So I was in children's church listening to the lesson on Jesus when I was about four or five years old. When I realized that I was a sinner and needed Jesus to pay for my sins, I told Pastor Bear that I was interested in knowing more about how to be saved. He took me aside and asked why I wanted to be saved. I said that I realized I was a sinner and needed Jesus. He explained that I needed to pray and talk to God about how I felt, so we prayed together. I want to be baptized to show that I want to follow Jesus always and that he is the Lord of my life. I never really have set apart my favorite verse. There are just too many, but I've always liked Isaiah 53, 5. He, that he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our enemies. Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. At first it was just in a lot of verse, but then I realized what it really meant. It has always been a good reminder of what Jesus did for me. Thank you, We traditionally have um, a, a parent or family member pray for the person getting baptized. So I'm going to ask Mark, uh, Sierra's dad, to pray for Sierra. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today that you have made this day possible. We thank you for Sierra and that in your grace you have redeemed her and brought her into your family. And thank you for her being part of our family and a part of the church family here. Lord, that's just a blessing to all of us. We. Um, Rejoice that today she has taken this opportunity to declare before everyone today her faith in you. Thank you already for the ways that she is serving you. Continue to strengthen and grow her relationship with you. Deepen it, Lord, that she, so she may continue to serve in the ways that you will have uh, before her. Lord, we just again thank you for this day. In your name, amen. Sierra, based on your profession of faith in Christ and your desire to live for Him, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Life by helping me believe 
and helping me understand the Bible better. I want to be baptized because in the Bible it says that Jesus commands all Christians to be baptized. I think your brother James is going to pray for you now too. Lord, I thank you for my brother Kyle. Thank you that he's not just my brother by birth, but also my brother. Because he's a member of your family. And so a brother to all of us as well. Thank you for his testimony that he has believed in you. And for the, uh, for the proclamation to this church that he wants to live for you. Please give him the habits daily that will help him to uh, draw near to you and for uh, all of us to do the same. Amen. Well, Kyle, based on your profession of faith in Jesus Christ uh, and your desire to live for him, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> a good connection somewhere. Um, share with us about your faith in Christ. When I was four or five, I remember coming home and sitting by the garden with my sister. We were eating pizza and she was telling me about how she believes that God sent his only son to die on the cross for everyone's sins and rose from the dead. I asked how to be saved. I don't remember before I became a Christian, but I know that after I became a Christian, God has helped me to understand the Bible. I want to be baptized to show others that I believe in Jesus. It's neat to hear how siblings can be a part of a salvation story too. So we're going to ask your sister Julia to pray for you now too. Dear Lord, I thank you for Catherine and I just thank you so much for um, giving her the salvation that she has in you. Um, I thank you for um, I thank you that she wants to show others that she believes in you, and um, I just thank you so much um, for her and her life. Um, I pray that you would help her to keep on showing others what she believes and sharing that, and I pray that um, she would grow in your grace and knowledge. In Jesus' name, amen. Catherine, based on your profession of faith in Jesus and your desire to live for him, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son. The Holy Spirit. Thank you for this and be a part of it and participate. You know, and um, I just, it's always good to remind everyone that um, baptism is not something that's going to allow Tim to enter into heaven, right? Um, what does the passage uh, say? God so loved the world that um, He gave His only begotten Son that whoever is baptized, you know, it's whoever believes, um, will not perish but have everlasting life. And so, um, really, if Tim hadn't believed yet, all that would be happening this morning is he'd be getting wet, right? But Tim has believed um, in the Lord Jesus Christ and has asked Him to be His Savior. And, and what baptism does, instead of giving him a place in heaven, it pictures for us what happened um, when Tim made a decision of faith in Christ. Romans 6 kind of helps us understand what baptism pictures. It says in verse 3, Do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in newness of life. So several little things are being pictured there. One is, Tim's got a union with Jesus Christ because of his faith in him. So we are baptized into Christ. But it also pictures something, right? Jesus died for our sins. And the Bible says that we died 
with him, in a sense, right? So baptism shows that Jesus died and was buried, right? He under the water. And thankfully, for Tim's sake, um, Jesus didn't stay dead, did he? He came alive again. So we're going to bring Tim up to show the picture of Jesus' resurrection. But with Tim's dying with Jesus, he also comes up alive, right, to live a new life. He calls it walking a newness of life. And so now Tim has a desire to show everybody that he has faith in Jesus and that he wants to live his life in a new way. And so our role in, as observers of this is to rejoice with God and what he's done in Tim's life and will do in the future, but also to be an encouragement and a, and a source of prayer for Tim in the days to come as he seeks to walk in this newness of life. So I'm going to ask Tim to come. Is it one? Oh, it's more. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to let Tim now um, kind of share his story uh, with you now this morning. What's going on, everybody? Hi. <laughs> uh, growing up with my parents, we went to church in Awana. I knew I grew up knowing God and what he's done for me, died on the cross for my sins, and, and I should be saved, you know. Um, it, was a, it was a great childhood. Um, <clears throat> all the way until my teenage years, we were going to church and the wands and all that fun stuff. Uh, getting into my teenage years, starting high school, started experimenting with drugs and alcohol, skateboarding a lot. Uh, not really home very much, very often at all. Uh, <clears throat> and that kind of led up to my parents leaving me at a young age. And so I was kind of off by myself, doing my own thing. Got into harder drugs and more alcohol and just living a very chaotic life. Um, until God sent Sar uh, the Sarpent County Sheriff to save my life, you know? Very chaotic life until they came. And since then, like I've been put on this very wonderful program that has literally changed my life for the better. Um, I'm working a very, very crazy AA program, and and I just got to trust God, you know, give my life to God every day, every night. Thank you for, for everything that I have, a good job, happiness, joy, mm -hmm. patience, kindness, everything. Because without God, I wouldn't have any of it, I'd still be living my chaotic life, you know. And, I have so many things that today that just makes my life so good and pure, you know, everything. But yeah, that's my life. So Tim, uh, in the treatment program, they talk about the higher power, a higher power. Who, who have you chosen a higher power or the power, higher power? No, the, the one and only God, Jesus Christ. Who's that? What did Jesus do for you? He died on the cross and rose again for my my sins. Great. And Tim is... Uh, my sins in my chaotic life. <laughs> You've chosen to, to trust in Him, receive Him as your Savior, and now you will live a newness of life. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. Well, because of your profession of faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit. So you can sit down. Yeah. Before, you, before you baptize me. Oh, thank you. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> I want to. I want to. Let's pray for Tim. Father, uh, we're so grateful for... Uh, the history we've heard here, a life that was really in chaos and, until Jesus came in and, and just changed it. And we're so grateful for that. Thank you for the faith that Tim has placed in Jesus. And now the, the journey he's on, it's, uh, it's one that has some ups and downs. There's some learning that needs to take place. And I pray that you would enable him to grow in the grace and knowledge of his Savior. Jesus Christ, that he would live each day out of the grace that God has poured out uh, onto him and uh, what he has experienced these last years. Thank you for the, the role, the place that Blaine has had in, uh, in helping him to understand uh, key things of the Christian life. And we pray that that would continue and that you would be glorified uh, continuously through Tim's life in Jesus' name. Tim, again, because of your profession and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection, to walk in the